वेलकम टू दी एस एम एस सनी ट्राई पावर एक्स सीरीज पावर्ड बाय एन एक्सओ एस दिस इन्वर्टर इज सपोर्टेड बाय आई पी सिक्सटी फाइव रेटिंग एंड फोर के ट्वेंटी सिक्स क्लाइमेट कंडीशन क्लास एंड ऑल्सो इंश्योर यू डोंट मिस आउट ऑन द फॉलोइंग क्राइटेरिया कवर इन द क्लास नाउ फर्दर मेक अ नोट ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंडीशन एस दे आर एक्सट्रीमली क्रूशल फॉर माउंटिंग maintain recommended clearances to walls inverter or other objects the inverter shouldn't be exposed to direct sunlight all ambient conditions must be met do not mount the inverter in areas containing highly flammable materials or gases maximum permissible height limit from mean sea level is 4000 meters and also maintain a minimum 50 degree incline in case of lying position Mount the wall bracket using two screws. Align the wall mounting bracket horizontally on the wall. Mark the positions and drill the marked holes. Insert screw anchors into the drilled holes if the support surface requires them. Secure the wall mounting bracket horizontally using screws and washers. Hook the inverter into the wall mounting bracket. Ensure that the inverter is securely in place. The inverter is correctly hooked in. when the indentations on in the wall mounting bracket and the mounting tab line up secure the inverter to the wall mounting bracket on both sides with the hexagon socket screw insert screws into the screw holes on the left and right tab of the wall mounting bracket and tighten them to secure the inverter against theft guide the padlock shackle through the metal tab of the wall mounting bracket and through the mounting tab of the inverter before closing it this completes mounting now disconnect the ac miniature circuit breaker from all three line conductors and secure it against reconnection ensure that all four dc load brake switches are switched off remove all front screws and open the front cover Strip the insulation of the phases and the grounding conductor approximately by 20 mm. AC cable requirement is crucial, so ensure the following criteria are precisely met. Loosen the swivel nut of the cable gland at the bottom of the inverter. Remove the additional seal and insert the cable gland when using cable with a diameter of 47 mm or more. Then lead the cable through the swivel nut and cable gland into the device and ensure proper stripping conductors are used. For cable termination, press the locking lever of terminal L1, L2, L3, N and PE upward. Guide conductor L1, L2, L3 N and PE into the terminal and press locking lever downward again for connection without a neutral conductor use the jumper provided to bridge terminal block PE and N for this press the locking lever of terminal PE and N upward guide the jumper into the terminals and press the locking lever downward again ensure that the correct conductors are assigned to all the terminals and they are securely in place Kindly note if additional grounding or equipotential bonding is required locally connect the grounding cable to a connection point for additional grounding or equipotential bonding using a hexagon socket screw a washer and a serrated conical spring washer this completes installation of ac connection a ripple control receiver or remote terminal unit can be connected to digital input di1 to 4 in a multi inverter system The ripple control receiver must be connected to digital input DI1 to 4 of the system manager. You can connect a fast stop switch at digital input 5 and an external grid and PV system protection device at digital input 6. Kindly make a note that technical requirements of the multifunction relay must be met. In the case of using a self assembly network cable, assemble RJ45 connectors and join them to the network cable. Open the swivel nut and then remove the four hole support sleeve from the cable gland. Now go ahead and remove the sealing plug of one of the four openings. Then thread the swivel nut over the network cable and insert it through the support sleeve. Now press the support sleeve and cable into the cable gland. 
and route the network cable to the RJ45 connection section. Finally, put the plug into one of the network jacks of the communication assembly. Ensure that the network cables are securely in place by pulling slightly on them. Place a ferrite around each network cable. Tighten the swivel nut on the cable gland hand tight. This will secure the network cables in place. If the inverter is installed outdoors, install over voltage protection for all the components in the network. If you would like to integrate the inverter into a local network, connect the other end of the network cable to the local network. Close the front cover of the inverter by tightening all screws. Here you will notice Sun Clicks connectors with SMA standard scope, field plugs and ceiling caps are provided in the accessory bag. Now strip approximately 15 mm of the cable insulation. Then insert the stripped cable into the Sun Clicks connector up to the stop. While doing so, ensure that the stripped cable and the Sun Clicks connector are of the same polarity. Now press the clamping bracket down until it audibly snaps into place. You can see the stranded wire inside the clamping bracket chamber and if in case it is not visible, then it simply implies that the cable is not inserted correctly. The connector must be reassembled. To start over the process, the cable must be removed. For that, loosen the clamping bracket by inserting a screwdriver. Pry the clamping bracket open. Now, remove the cable to repeat the entire process once again. Once you get the process right, push the swivel nut up to the thread and tighten it. Switch off the inverter's DC load brake switch and measure the PV array voltage. Connect the assembled DC connectors to the inverter and ensure it is snapped properly into place. For unused DC inputs, insert the DC connectors with ceiling plugs and ensure that it is securely placed. Switch on the DC load brake switch and the AC circuit breaker. Now, if the green and the red LEDs flash simultaneously during initial commission, operation is stopped because country data set selection is not done yet. For the inverter to begin operation, the configuration must be completed and a country data must be set. If the green LED is still flashing, the conditions for activating feed-in operation are not yet met. As soon as the conditions for feed-in operations are met, the inverter starts with feed-in operation and depending on the available power, the green LED will light up continuously. If the red LED lights up, that means an event has occurred. In that case, use the event number to find out which event has occurred and if necessary, Initiate countermeasures. Ensure that the inverter feeds in correctly. 